review board um, and uh, introduce the members in attendance. Uh, I'm Catherine Porter and I'm the chair. Let's see, we have Michael Bertwistle. Uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Uh, I can't see everybody. Uh, Erica Vickless, uh, uh, Chris Brestrup is here. Uh, Anybody else? Jan just uh, just uh, entered entered the virtual room. Oh, okay. And Jan, uh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't prepared to. Uh, and Jan, uh, God, I'm sorry. Mark Quet. Mark Quet. Yes, of course. Yeah. And Maureen Pollock uh, is the staff person. Um, and uh, we have several. What's that? Nate Malloy. Oh, is Nate here? I didn't. I didn't, Nate Malloy is here too at this moment. Okay, Nate Malloy, who's a senior planning, uh, a senior member of the planning board, the planning department. Anybody else pop in that I don't see here? Okay. Lindsay Schnarr. Oh, is Lindsay here? Okay, Lindsay Schnarr. They're not showing on my screen, so I can, I'm just roaming around here. Let me just see who else is around. So Lindsay's here. Let me come down. Well, that's all. There's you just Jan. needed to do okay, some okay. memory. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I see everybody. Okay. So uh, if we have any public comment, that will come at the end of the meeting after old business. And at this point, uh, I think we can start the meeting um, to see if there are any announcements. Anybody uh, have any announcements? Actually, uh, Chris, uh, would this be a good time to talk about the memo? Or would you like to wait? I could talk about it now. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. A few minutes. So um, the building commissioner, um, actually we, we, the building commissioner and I were asked to come up with um, some ideas to help businesses open, businesses that have been closed um, and potentially have new businesses open during this time of everything being shut down and, you know, trying to get our, economy back on its feet. And um, so the building commissioner came up with the idea of a 180 day um, temporary zoning that would allow um, certain uses. And those uses would be um, restaurants and retail uses, um, personal care establishments, and um, oh, retail establishments. Um, in certain districts, which would be just the business districts, the BG, the BL, the BBC, BN, and commercial zoning districts, um, and some non-conforming uses to be granted um, what we would call an administrative approval rather than having to go through planning board or zoning board of appeals. And um, as I said before, it would just be for 180 days coming, starting sometime this summer. Um, we hope. Um, and there would also be accessory uses associated with that. Um, and they would include dining, outdoor dining, live entertainment, and um, potentially drive-through. But I think what the building commissioner meant by drive-through is what we're currently doing now. We have curbside pickup. We're not talking about having a drive-through window like, um, like Dunkin' Donuts has or anything like that. So th the effort is to just make it easier for those restaurants that um, the, the existing restaurants that are coming back, they're not going to be able to have um, a full complement of people in, in the interior. I think they're going to be limited at first to 25% of their normal capacity. So how can we allow them to have more customers um, and, you know, potentially allow them to come back to their former um, status? Um, and so the idea was, well, maybe we, maybe the restaurants have space on their sidewalk out in front of their building. Maybe that space is um, public space. Maybe it belongs to the town. Um, what kinds of things can we do to allow them to use the space outside their building and potentially town right of way to serve outside? Um, and then do we want to allow them to have um, entertainment of some sort to attract customers? So um, the idea is that during this 180 day period, um, people who are trying to reestablish their businesses and add potentially accessory uses, or people who are starting new businesses, you know, maybe some of our 
restaurants and retail stores have failed. We don't really know which ones have failed, but some of them may have, and they're going to be empty storefronts. And so how can we allow new businesses to start without having to go through Zoning Board of Appeals and Planning Board approval? Um, so the idea is that the um, town council could give the building commissioner uh, authorization to grant um, administrative approval to these businesses. And then the other part of it is that, um, and this, I, this is what I thought Catherine was referring to before, but um, that the design review board uh, review for signage, lighting, and placement of outs outdoor furnishings and other non-permanent building or site alteration would be suspended during that time period for those particular uses in those particular zoning districts. So this is coming before the um, town council tonight. The town council is hearing about it really for the first time. Um, I think Maureen sent you the memo that Paul Bockelman wrote <coughs> along right. with yeah. the uh, proposed zoning right. amendment. And um, so it's coming before town council. Town council will probably refer it to one of their committees. We're expecting it will be referred to the CRC, Community Resources Committee, and um, that they will take it up excuse me, at their meeting tomorrow tomorrow during the day. And then it will also be presented as an idea to the planning board on Wednesday. Um, if the town council thinks it's a good idea and, you know, likes it to, wants it to be pursued, then we'll talk about um, probably uh, scheduling a public hearing sometime in the next three weeks to a month um, to allow this to happen. It would probably be a public hearing with the planning board and the CRC. Um, and then it would go back to town council. So, so this is an idea that just came about last week um, and it's starting to be talked about now. And you're certainly welcome to um, you know, add your comments and thoughts on it. Anybody have any? <laughs> um, I think it's a good idea. I wanted to ask whether the part about the design review or sort of um, elimination temporarily, whether we couldn't put something in there that just would say um, that, you know, that this would be reviewed for businesses keeping to their already approved logos, colors, fonts, or something like that, so that we don't just suddenly have an explosion of all sorts of messy, new, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not quite sure how that could be worded, but it, it would just sort of let people know in these businesses that yes, they can add additional signs that say go here or this is us on the sidewalk or whatever, but they should keep to the look they already have. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. I made that note, thank you. Does this go along with opening up the street that was proposed? Uh, by uh, Gabrielle um, earlier, is that also part of this? Uh, yes, that's a yeah. second. That's a second part. So there are actually three parts to it. The first part is a zoning, um, rezoning, allowing uh, the zoning to be relaxed. The second part is uh, public ways, allowing the town council to um, authorize the the town manager to authorize use of the public ways. And this could either be it could be sidewalks or it could be, um, you know, going out into the parking spaces along the street. There's not that much traffic now. So what if we took over some parking spaces and allowed those to be used for right. outdoor dining? Yeah, They've done it in other places. In fact, I think the building commissioner sent around um, an article about it. And I don't know if I copied Maureen, but I'll try to find that article and ask Maureen to send it to you because it really, um, it shows some exciting ideas that have been tried in other towns and are being tried um, in other towns. And so I think we're going to see more of this kind of thing, particularly now that we're trying to get back on our feet after COVID-19. Um, and then I wanted to mention that the third part of this is um, working with the Board of License Commissioners with regard to um, liquor licenses. So businesses that currently are allowed to serve alcohol within the confines of their um, establishments would 
you know, potentially be able to serve outside on the sidewalk or in a parklet that's created um, in, a, in a parking space, but they need to get permission from the Board of License Commissioners. They will also need to get permission from the state, from the ABCC. Um, so that process hasn't been figured out yet, um, but that's one of the things that, that we're gonna be working on. So essentially, essentially like uh, Fresh Sides right now has tables out in front, is that sort of what people envision is just moving up and down the sidewalks um, like in front of fresh noodles or uh, pasta or pasta, even there, putting a couple of tables out in front of their eateries. Is that the plan? Yes, that yeah. is the okay. plan. Um, yeah, so any street that has, an, has a restaurant or a food service, well, like Black Sheep has mm -hmm. uh, tables, would this wouldn't just uh, refer to uh, North north and south Pleasant Street then, I guess, it would also take into uh, consideration uh, the side streets as well. That's right, and it could also include places like, we mentioned non-conforming uses, so there's a, a pizza place on, um, I think it's either Sunset Ave or Fearing Street, maybe it's oh, like yeah. a like yeah. Sunset Ave Fearing. So they are a non-conforming use in a residential <clears throat> district, but they might be allowed to do something like this too. Um, so we wanted to include that kind of activity as well. Uh, Erica has a question. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah, so one thing I wanted to make sure is that it's um, written in somewhere that we shouldn't um, hamper accessibility of the sidewalks. It still has to maintain, right. remain a priority. Um, and I love the idea of taking over the street or some parking spaces. Um, in part for that reason. The other one I was wondering is if the 180 days could be considered, oh, of course we don't know what the colleges are gonna do, but you know, imagine that this starts in June, This that would take us through September. You know, the influx of new people with money in their pockets comes at the beginning of September. And you know, if that could be a boon to businesses to serve the college population in this way, I mean, that might be, that might be possible or maybe write in that you could reconsider extensions of time if it's working well or something like that. The 180 days would actually go probably till the end of the year because it would be six months. Is, okay, sorry, my stupid math. Um, and then, sorry, I was thinking I was three. Um, and then the last one was, yeah, kind of in Jan's comment is, when you say temporary signage, what's the definition? I mean, everything can be removed. And so um, maybe some clarification of that so that mm -hmm. if a new business does start. Um, and I think you said too, that if, if a new business starts, then we would give them permission to do whatever they wanted to do for that 180 days. But if they plan to remain in business, my understanding is then they would still have to come before the various boards, including the design review board, to get official approval. Is that right? Not necessarily. They would, they would oh, oh. Do anything they want to do because they still have to go through people. It's just not us. No. Oh, okay. I'm a little confused. So, so if you and I opened a business uh, in an empty storefront and we threw up a bunch of signs because the design review board doesn't have to approve them at this time. Yeah, and the building design, commissioner does, right? Well, I forget what the memo said. Chris, what, what did the memo say? Somebody looks at this stuff. Um, the building commissioner would look at it and would look at the um, requirements for signs, how many signs are allowed, what are the sizes of signs that are allowed. Um, so in terms of signs, the thing that I envision being relaxed would be the sandwich board signs because we would want, you know, to attract attention to these places. But it's not as if the sign uh, bylaw goes out the window because we would still be, I would be consulting with the building commissioner and we would still be looking at making sure that the signs comply with um, the current zoning bylaw to the most, to, you know, to the extent that they can. Okay. Michael, did you have a question? Yes, I do. Uh, I'm wondering whether the, any way to speed up this process, it seems to me all the steps that Chris was talking about in terms of going through the council and the CRC and having a public hearing and then back to the council. 
Uh, it sounds like that's exactly the problem that we're trying to solve, uh, getting things moving quickly. And my question is, is an emergency bylaw of this sort, does it require a public hearing as well? It does. We've consulted the town attorney. Um, we've talked to Joel Bard about this, and uh, we do need to go through the process of amending the zoning bylaw to allow this. But what we're hoping is that by the time that things are really opened up and people are feeling like coming out again, which will probably be sometime in mid-July, that we can have something in place by mid-July. I think that's too, too, uh, too long a time frame. <laughs> yeah, I think, right we ought, I think we ought to try to shoot for having it, having it open in June. Uh, and that means, it seems to me that it means po if we have to have a public hearing, it means posting the notice for a public hearing right away and having that public hearing right away, even though we don't know exactly know what the issue is going to, what the, what we know what the issue is. We don't know what the solution that, that will be proposed will be, but if we can post a public hearing right away, then we can move toward finality of the specifics of uh, sooner. Yeah, I agree. Makes sense. So here's one thing, it's a little bit of a, what, I'm not sure what to call it, but um, in our current zoning, I think because we're a city now, the city known as the town of Amherst, <laughs> after town council votes to um, adopt a zoning bylaw change, you have to wait 14 days before it actually goes into effect. I remember when we did the repeal and replace last year that that's what happened. So, so I think when we're talking about the middle of July, we're talking about you know, having a decision by town council sometime in later June, and then uh, by the time the 14 days elapses, um, we'll be in the middle of July. So I think we are thinking of a, an expedited uh, time frame, but I think that's good um, advice, Michael, and I'll pass that along. Thank you. And I also want to say that I think this is a great idea, uh, and I want to make sure we get it done. Okay. All right. Yeah, Lindsay has her hand up. Oh, go ahead. Um, I also think this is a great idea and I agree with Michael that the sooner the better. Um, so I, I just have a general um, kind of feasibility question, which is, I don't know if anyone's really looked at where businesses that uh, would be able to take advantage of this allowance exist and if there's if there are any businesses that don't have adequate space adjacent to their property that they could take advantage of, I think it might be worth just mapping out, not in any kind of extensive time consuming way if possible, but mapping out um, you know, where these places are and if there are businesses that really don't have um, sidewalk access or it's going to impede accessibility um, that there might be a way to provide them with adequate space that's um, perhaps, like you said, in the parking lot, but just to kind of even the playing field so that we don't have businesses that don't have the capacity to do this simply based on issues that are kind of beyond their control. I don't know if that's possible, but I think it's worth a look mm -hmm. and an effort to, to see if that, you know, something can be done. Yeah, I was wondering when you mentioned pasta e basta, you know, it's so steep. I can't imagine putting a table and chairs outside there. Right. Uh, if right. It's floating down the sidewalk. Yeah. But yeah, but that street, though, has quite, you know, several places. Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't know how, you know. Uh, well, if you took over that back parking lot, I mean, it isn't right. it's very close for people to run in and out. But if they're going out of their back kitchen door or something, I mean, I I'm just thinking of like Athens. They they dodge across the street to wait on you and dodge traffic back, you know. I mean, it's, it doesn't have to be really close. If you're <laughs> then there's uh, the very popular Mexican restaurant back in that alley. Is that Bueno or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they have no, you know, I, maybe they could put tables right there or go in the back. But I have to revisit, uh, maybe I'm missing something here, but uh, so somebody throws up uh, a, a store uh, and sort of anything goes. I mean, the, the building inspector isn't looking at the aesthetics of the sign. He's looking to see how, uh, how many signs you can stick in the window. And so somebody comes in the middle of Amherst and paints the building bubblegum pink. Uh, does that mean it stays? that's permit, you know, that's going to be okay forever? Or doesn't the design review board after this 
limited 180 days, click back in, don't they have to come to somebody to say, can, you know, we'd like to open up a store and we want to paint a bubble gum pink. And don't we have a say about that? I'm not talking about the temporary. I'm talking about the permanent uh, where I think the design review board, uh, if we have any purpose in town, should be uh, given a chance to review what these owners want to do on a more permanent basis. Now, maybe I'm missing something, but seems like we're out of the loop. So one of the things that the um, article says is that this um, design review board review being suspended applies only to signs, lighting, placement of outdoor furnishings, and any other non-permanent yes, right. building or site alteration. Yes. Yeah, that's, I have no problem with that for the temporary, but what happens if they remain on as temp, uh, less, as a more permanent business, then what? Well, why are we here if we're, we're always looking at every little, we try to look at every little thing, although sometimes the colors get wonk, wonky, but uh, we're doing our best to present Amherst in its best light. And now let's suppose five different businesses come in and just throw up anything and they're there forever without any review. Uh, I have to say, I don't think that that's right, but maybe others have a problem with it. Well, part of it, if I may, um, is that the building commissioner is going to consult with the planning director, and that's me. So he and I will be putting our heads together, and I'm sure we will be showing things to Maureen and Nate as well. Um, so it's not kind of a you know free for all. There still will be review of of things, probably not as thorough is what, I mean, certainly not as thorough as what you would do because you have five members and you're very, um, you know, careful about your reviews, but it wouldn't be as if there were no review at all. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And we would try to adhere to the DRB criteria that are listed in the zoning bylaw. Also, it just states temporary things don't get a review, but if somebody were painting the building, that's considered permanent. And then it would either come to us or you'd tell them they'd have to wait, right, Chris? Well, that's true, except that um, only painting buildings within 150 feet of the town common comes before the DRB. But if you paint a building elsewhere, it actually doesn't come before the DRB, which is weird, I know. But um, the DRB doesn't, doesn't have jurisdiction up? over paint, you know, of paint colors. Porta and came to us. Porta is more than they, 50 feet came sort of after the fact. <laughs> and they did. Um, I mean, we told them they were in violation, but they weren't really? They didn't need to get permission to paint the building purple, unfortunately. Oh. Okay. Well, All right. Well, good, know. good luck. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, I think either we do what we do our job or we don't do our job. Uh, I'm having, I have no question, no trouble with the uh, 180 days, anything goes because we need business. But, you know, after after it's over, people are going to come to us and say, gee, how'd that building get there in the middle of downtown? Where was the design review board? And they'll say, well, you know, we weren't allowed to chip in. So well, it won't it won't include buildings. Um, you know, we're not allowing buildings to, to go in like that. We're just... Oh, okay. It's only signage. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Yep. So it's not like when East Pleasant Street is all of a sudden going to be there and you won't have anything to say about it. Okay. All right. Well, okay. All right. Uh, is there any other comments? And it sounds and it sounds like this is just the beginning of this conversation right. and there will be a lot of opportunities for residents of Amherst to weigh in. Um, there would be a public hearing through the town council or the planning board? Planning board, well, right? Uh, the town, uh, well, this, for a zoning amendment, the CRC needs to hold a public hearing. The CRC acts on the behalf of the town council. The mm -hmm. planning board also needs to hold a public hearing. The way I'm understanding it now is that the town council and this and the planning board would or excuse me the crc and the planning board would get together and hold a joint public hearing i think that's what the current proposal is so it could be 
that that public hearing happens as early as June 17th. And then it would go to town council for them to, um, you know, vote on it. Okay. But that's, that's the, the quickest timeline I've seen. Sure. Okay. And um, so um, I guess we'll just keep, uh, keep an eye on that. I can certainly inform any information that you provide me. I can forward to the DRD members. Sure. Um, yeah. So, all right. So let's move on to our next uh, gi uh, uh, agenda item. Okay. Which, which is, uh, let's see here, which is TD Bank <clears throat> North. Mm -hmm. Um, Heather, uh, I'm going to now make you a panelist, which means that you may use your uh, camera and your your microphone. So you might you might have to click on mute and um, press the button that says uh, start video. Okay. There we go. Hi, Heather. Hey, how are you? Okay. Good. Thank you for explaining that at the beginning, but I'm, I'm kind of used to that now. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> With all these meetings. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself and explain what you're, what you're requesting? And as you're doing that, I will pull up uh, what you submitted and I will show everyone. Okay, great. Bear with me for one moment. Um, just... All this new technology, huh? I know. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so this and then this. And so you're from the sign co company, correct? correct? Yeah, I'm Heather Dudko with Philadelphia Sign. We represent um, numerous sign companies. So do you want to, I'll wait a minute until you can. Yeah, uh, yeah, just give me one second. I just need to rotate the page, rotate this way. And then now I'm going to share it. Share, there we go. Okay, can, can everyone see this? Yes. Okay. So currently there are two existing wall signs at the bank and a ground sign. Um, the proposal is to remove the two wall signs, one on the front elevation and one on the rear elevation and replace them with these um, square logos that just say TD. So currently the two wall signs, they're more of a rectangular uh, shape and they say TD bank and they're proposing to remove them and replace them with this new style. So each sign is four square foot, internally illuminated. The rear sign will be replaced at the same location and the front sign, it looks like will be moved up above the doorway in the windows. Currently it's kind of on the left side of the building. I think I did. So, so this is a uh, triangle street would be located right here. Or, oh no, right here, sorry. Right, this way? Can no, everyone see my mouse? <laughs> right, so the, the EO2 is on the parking lot elevation. Mm -hmm. And the EO1 is on the front. Okay, so Triangle Street would be along here. Okay, okay. So bear with me. Right. So there's um, a picture of the current wall sign on the front elevation towards the left side of the building. Oh, right here. Um, yeah. Yep. And they want to move it up over the, the doorway and the windows. I'm going to interrupt you for one second and mention to the ZBA, uh, to, sorry, to the DRB members that at the beginning of this pandemic, uh, TD Bank submitted an application for uh, a replacement of this sign. Oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, they just did. Oh, at, somebody the, else at the beginning, did. at the beginning of this pandemic. Oh, okay. And um, because the DRB, according to your rules and regulations and in the zoning bylaw, the DRB has 30 days uh, to review an application. And so we well exceeded that amount of time um, due to, you know, the town manager's office put a stop to all uh, board meetings for a while. And so you may see soon that this, this sign will be replaced. Um, and so uh, don't be alarmed. It, unfor unfortunately, the, the board uh, was not able to provide uh, con uh, recommendations for this sign, but I wanted just to be transparent yeah, right. about that. Yeah. But to continue with this sign, that's the front one. And then this would be, 
Okay. And then this would be the replacement of the, the one in the That's back. The, exist, the existing rear sign. That's the existing. Mm -hmm. So they are moving, the bank is moving towards uh, replacing most of their signage, updating it with just the logo, just the TD. They're removing the bank um, text on most of their signs that they're rebranding. Can you describe this, the uh, dimensions of the current signs? The new ones are four by four, I understand, but what are the old ones? They're two by, the, the replacement are two by two, two foot by two foot, four square feet. Oh, right. Yeah. And I don't, I actually, I do not have the measurements of the existing signage. They are, they are narrower, they're not as high as two foot. I don't think, but. Are the current signs internally illuminated? They are, yes. Um. Are you, are you still asking questions, Michael? No, I'm okay. sorry. That's okay. Um, I could you go back to the view of the current front, Maureen, mm -hmm. please? Sure. Um, hmm. I don't. Okay, okay, we're going this way. So I think the um, the only real concern I have is. The, um, the shadow of, you know, the, the building, it looks like it, it might be, the sign might even be more hidden above the door. Um, it's a little hard to tell from this photo. Uh, but I, I do think that the space where the current sign is seems like a good location for a large sign of some sort to uh, just as a, as a business owner's um, interest to, to find um, the most obvious location for signage. It seems like that that's a better location, in my opinion, than over the door. Um, so that that's my really my only concern. So could we ask the applicant to respond to that positioning of the sign? I, I don't, I was not given any extenuating reason why they want to move it over the door or over the windows. Um, so I would assume, I would presume from that that they just they just prefer to identify the entrance more than to have it off to the side. But I'm just I'm just kind of presuming that from my work with them. I if that's the, if the board feels that that's a better placement, I, I'm sure that that they would agree to that. I mean, unless they had some extenuating circumstance that they had to they had to reposition it. But I I would not see why why they wouldn't agree to that if that's if that's the feeling that it's a better placement there i i do i do hear the argument for you know trying to identify the door i think that's important um i think that can also you know maybe it's a second sign i i don't think that um i, th I don't think there's a disadvantage at least from my perspective to having mm -hmm. a second sign uh mm -hmm. so that there's one over the door and one in that area where there's no windows or perhaps there's just something on the door itself, like a print. I don't know what's there currently. I would assume they would have some sort of door vinyl with the hours that typically yeah. they have something like that. Um, I would, I, I mean, I would suggest that if, um, that I'll, I can, we can condition it. If you want to condition it approved at that current location, and then if for some reason they, they respond that there, are, there is some circumstance that they have to have it over the doors, then we'd have to just reapproach the board. Uh, just to clarify, Heather, uh, the DRB provide, provides recommendations. And so these recommendations will be provided to the building commissioner as you seek the building permit application, yeah. approval yeah. for the application. Yeah. Um, I did originally submit the application already and then it was, then it, was referred back to the board. So what, what are other members feeling about the location of, of the wall sign replacement? Well, I agree with Lindsay. I think the, uh, the current sign is, is a better place. And it seems to me, since that's the only building in that, or that's the only business in that area of the building, the confusion as to where the right door is seems to be not a relevant uh, issue. 
And I think the sign would look better where the current sign is. I also want to say that I think the current, the replacement sign is a better looking sign than the original. Uh, simpler, cleaner, uh, does the job better. So I, I would suggest uh, that if the, if the, uh, uh, if the, the bank build, if the bank uh, company doesn't uh, object that this, that, that sign be replaced where the current sign is. And I like There's, logo. It's not. It's a clean logo, yeah. so I have no argument. It's whatever you all feel, or the bank feels is best for them. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> they're going to have a new sign out on the street there, that big one, um, which uh, presumably will be a larger logo as well. Uh -huh. And this is just a small two-foot square lighted sign, almost like a light. It just you know, like a light with a mark on it. Um, and if they want to have it over the door, it's true, it might be obscured by the overhang, but if it's lit and, and you're at street level, right. there's no problem with seeing it. So if they want to have a big sign and then just something that marks the door, that's fine too. I mean, they're gonna have to move the wiring, you know, it'll cost them more, but it, does, it doesn't bother me. I'm just looking at the Google Street View. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to get closer, but of course it's not working for me. I, think, <laughs> um, I had a very, very hard time getting these Google Photos. I don't know. Some sites are so <laughs> easy to get a picture, and some sites it's very difficult to get a Street View. Yeah. Um, I think either location could work. I agree um, with. Lindsay, that there's something, uh, there's a visibility argument to be made to replacing the sign in its current location. However, um, of the two other businesses um, who have storefronts in that building, one of them does have their sign directly above the door and the other one has um, their sign at the roof line interesting um so it's already we already see a variety of responses there um the thing that will make it visible if it's ab above the door is the fact that it's illuminated um so i think i i would be fine approving either solution okay um any other members or i think everyone no Provide a comment. Okay. So. So, what are we saying? That offer a suggestion, but doesn't seem to be. People don't have strong feelings. Do whatever you, whatever they feel best. Is that how? Is that how you're hearing it? Uh, it sounds like uh, Michael, Catherine, Jane, and Erica all agree that, you know, if, if it makes sense for the bank to still locate it above the door, it sounds like everyone is, is okay with it. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like Lindsay would, uh, are you okay if it would be over the door or would you still, are you still adamant that it'd be located on that, uh, to the left of the door? No, it's just an observation. Yeah. Not, I don't think anything. anybody's adamant about it either way. It seems to be <laughs> the sign itself. I want that sign. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, and, and simply suggest that the bank uh, rethink where they want to put it. That either right. Place, yeah. yeah. Either place is acceptable to the design. I think so. Should we just make a motion then to approve um, with the recommendation that the bank makes sure that the sign is visible under the overhang, something like that. I sure. You want to make that as a motion, then if we can. If okay, I salute. Okay, <laughs> is there a second? Sure, I'll second that. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other discussion about the placement of the sign? If not, uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? Okay. All and right. 
so that was for that sign and for this back um, back so, of the building sign wh where would the uh, location be for the replacement at the same location above same location yeah so is everyone okay with that sure. location sure. okay Fine. okay yeah all right well yeah. <laughs> congratulations uh, so well uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll type up those uh the recommendations and okay. email a copy to you and to okay. rob mora okay thank you thank so you much for joining us thank much. you good luck with everything good luck sure. thank you okay so let me stop the sharing the screen and uh nate do you want to um be in charge of sharing your screen Sure, I can do that. I just, so you have more control. Okay, so Kendra All right, Park. yeah, um, I think we're all set. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Great. I can't see you though. Yeah, that's great. You should focus on the, the material and not how bad I look. <laughs> I'm getting kind of shaggy. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I think everything's in PDF. Yeah, there so, it is. I think everyone can see that. Right. The um, this is the uh, the revised plan. I'll, I'll I'll say it's mostly final. The um, from the last time we spoke, uh, the design team you know talked with some vendors and we revised the plan so that you know the play area um, remained the same. But this northern section, there's no longer a sloped walkway to a hill and a hillside slide. Wow. There is a an accrade walkway. So it becomes an accessible loop. Mm -hmm. And in this grass area, there's actually gonna be um, some mounds, some grass, some, you know, I'll say they're, they're gonna be sod, but there'll be some grassed mounds. So you realize that the, the hillside slide was only gonna be about a four foot slide. And a lot of the vendors questioned uh, how that would work. They required a slide to be above grade on concrete footings and then have rubberized surface around it. So the vision of having a really nice uh, slide built into the hillside was not really what we'd get. Uh, so we revised it to have this. Uh, it also allows for, like I said, an accessible route and uh, future connections north along North Pleasant. So there's a few different areas where, you know, pathways can connect to this because it is substantially at grade, we're not bringing in as much fill. If we look at the plan, uh, there's uh, in this, I'll say this pink color, there's uh, granite uh, sitting walls and granite blocks as benches. So up here in the north, there's a, a granite, you know, a block uh, here. This area is a P-stone um, kind of, it's in place of a sandbox now, we have a P-stone area. And it's about, um, gosh, I think it's, um, is it, uh, I know it's at least 12, I think I was gonna say, is it 24 feet? I'd have to look at that. Maybe, 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 I think it's 14 feet diameter. Yeah, 14 feet diameter. And, um, you know, there's some granite blocks around here. Uh, if we keep moving to the south, there's this amphitheater is still built into the hillside. So there will be a little topography here still with some granite uh, or stone um, benching. Uh, they're coming further to the south. There's a mix of regular, uh, you know, standard fabricated benches and then stone benches. I supposed to be trying to ask, yeah. uh, I might hold on a second. That's not me, but all right. Let me mute everyone. All right, and then there's still Nate. some more, um, you know, combination of granite as we move along. On the other side of the, we've jumped over here now. There's a uh, another uh, uh, sitting wall that'll enclose a, a plaza area, and there'll be tables and chairs inside of that. And then there's some more granite blocks along here. Along with the plantings, this forms a nice, you know, a, a barrier along North Pleasant Street. There's uh, there's a mix of five benches. So there's a bench here, located here along the play area, and one along the path. And those are will be, um, you know, fabricated benches. They'll be metal. They'll all have backs and arms, uh, so they can be, you know, help people get up and down. In the orange here, there's a number of rocks and boulders. So the town also plans to add a number of rocks that can be used to, to climb on, to sit on, and just also as part of a natural barrier. Um, if we um, look along the edges, we're not proposing to use uh, a, a fabricated fence. We're 
when to use plantings and seeding and other uh, elements to create barriers. So, um, you know, I think a fence would be costly and also difficult to, you know, to install in terms of how it would fit in with the rest of the park. So along North Pleasant Street, you can see the planting beds, there's envisioned, um, you know, ground cover with um, understory trees and shrubs, and then a few larger trees. There already are some existing trees here. Uh, so, you know, the park design really responds to the topography and existing trees and tries to preserve as many as we can. Along um, on the east side, so East Pleasant Street is here. In this area, which isn't shaded yet, this is a naturalized play area. So um, it even starts here, there'll be some vertical stumps and um, you know, more planting here for kids. Uh, these vertical stumps will cross the path and lead into an area that is all wood mulched. And there'll be um, logs that'll be um, you know, laid down on grade and maybe stacked on top of each other. They'll be secured with piping that is anchored into the ground. So like a threaded rod that, that, that is then buried. So this becomes an area with stumps, logs, and then also some other rocks. Uh, and granite blocks that'll define this area. This area is something that the playground vendors will not, um, they won't endorse necessarily as a playground because it's something they don't typically do. So it's something that the town is gonna work on with the contractor. You know, we've researched what is a safe material under here. So there'll be about eight inches of a wood fiber for a, a, a safe surface. Um, and most things will be, you know, less than two feet high, but you know, most playground um, vendors will not use real wood. Um, they don't, for whatever reason, they don't like, you know, it is, it is, it, it does tend to rot and splinter and doesn't have the life. So they, you know, Pulaski Park did use it and then we know it can be used. Um, this is the a rubberized surface shown here. So it won't be this color necessarily, but it'll be one big rubberized surface with play equipment on it. And we're looking to use manufacturer equipment here both because it's inclusive, it's accessible, so we have some nice accessible features, an accurate spinner that is pretty big that people can get onto, um, you know, spin around. We have larger climbing structures, um, you know, that are targeted to the two to five year old age range and then five to 12, that can be used for anyone. Uh, and then in the sitting area, this little, you know, this area, everything is accessible. There'll be just, you know, maybe a, material change, but you know, this will be a sitting area with tables and an accessible sitting area here. The main walkway east to west is gonna be um, an asphalt walkway. It'll be at least five feet and it'll become um, incorporated into the sidewalk, um, the sidewalks of the town. So it'll be plowed in the winter. It's the only part of the um, park that will be open year round and also you know, open at night. So along the path, there's one bench, there's some bike racks, and there's some proposed lighting, uh, you know, in and around this walkway so that it'll be illuminated at night. There's a, some light poles here. The plan is to reuse some acorn lighting that's found downtown and to install those. And then when, you know, if there's a plan in the future for, you know, um, a redesigned light fixture for Kendrick Park or this area, we would just remove the poles and the the lamps and put in the new lighting. Um, there's three trash cans, one located here, here, and here. They're, you know, it's a it's a 40 gallon trash can that looks like the rest of the ones in downtown and it's half recycling and half trash. We hope to have it be, you know, just a carry in, carry out. Um, there's an entry sign located here and this little planting island. You know, one on one side, there's, um, you know, welcome to Kendrick Park and some grant acknowledgements that need to happen. And on the other side will be playground rules and regulations. I think according to the standards, we need to identify the play equipment and have a few safety guidelines. Um, the playground vendors like to have a freestanding sign kind of in each play area, but we're going to have it all on the back side of the sign. So it reduces the number of of, um, of structures and signs. This was envisioned as a pollinator garden and it still is. It'll, you know, it'll be perennials and things that are easy to maintain for the town public works. It's not, um, you know, if the garden club of Amherst would like to volunteer, they may have some opportunity, but we're not envisioning this necessarily to be, you know, a, a really intense type of garden. Um, 
And then this area over here is a rain garden. So, um, you know, under this, there'll be some sub drains and it'll go to an overflow here um, that'll capture some rainwater and then it will, you know, get piped into the town stormwater system. But this, you know, there is um, this area for, you know, um, overland flow and then, you know, try to have some retention here before it, if it, you know, if it gets into the system. Um, I don't know if there's any questions at this point. I was gonna go through one more presentation just to show a little bit more about materials. So this is the style bench. It's not the color uh, that we like. So this is, um, there'll be six foot benches and eight foot benches, both with backs. And we're looking at having a center armrest. So it's a different style than we have. It's, um, you know, we're not gonna use the plastic slats. Here's the type of table and recycling trash can. So their trash cans will be black just to match what's downtown. Here are the tables and chairs. So these will be a one, a one piece um, table set for the plaza area. And here's one with an accessible seat. You know, I guess they can be bolted down. And when we presented to the planning board, it was recommended that they somehow be secured, even though they are a few hundred pounds. I guess there's concern that someone might take them. In terms of colors, this may not look very nice, but um, the manufacturer offers about a dozen colors. Most of them are pretty bright. Um, these are kind of the, the colors that the team was looking at. Um, I haven't, I've asked them to submit more, for more images, but you know, these are the colors we would choose from for the tables and chairs. And we're also looking at having two picnic tables that would be in the mulch area. They'd be all metal, one piece. Again, maybe this type of muted color as opposed to being a bright red. Here is the entry sign. The idea is that it would be no more than 12 square feet, so four feet by three feet roughly. You know, it'd be a, a signboard that would be, you know, with two stone um, columns that would be attached to, and there's the front and the back. And that has yet to be worked out. I mean, I think, you know, feel free to comment on the general style or design and we want it to be something simple. These are images just illustrating what we're considering in terms of materials. So this type of you know, square granite or stone block. Here's some pea stone and here's some other natural rock. So this just gives you an idea of how you know, what, what it will look like on the materials. Here's, you know, if, if in the amphitheater or the curved seating, uh, this is the type of stone we'd be looking at. We're working with a stone vendor now just to get cost estimates and information on installation. In terms of the grass mounds, we drew inspiration from a few different areas. This image here is Washington Square Park. It's synthetic. Um, here are some more natural ones. So, but there will be two mounds in that northern grass area. And we're looking at using, you know, installing it with sod. So it'll be something like this, not, not too extreme, but something kids can, can explore. These are images of Pulaski Park, but it gives you an idea of, um, these were uh, white oak and locusts that the, the city provided and they're staked into the ground on uh, wood fiber. So this is something we're looking at for our agility area. And here's a view again. So here, here are the stumps that are vertical and the stump is um, half the height is exposed and half is just direct buried in the ground. And so we would, you know, mimic the same installation and have it be both in grass and on wood chips. And again, this just shows you the difference of material. In terms of the playground area, uh, we like a lot of what this concept has, not necessarily the colors. Um, here is the accessible spinner. So it is something that is pretty big. It is at grade. And so people can enter it from a few different areas. It does spin. Uh, we're asking for a new feature instead of this tractor, but this is a spinner, maybe another spinner or something small here. This is the two to five age group, and this is the five to 12 age group structure. People have commented that they don't like the lime green color, That's, that can be changed, but we do like the different elements here. And this also persuaded us to eliminate the hillside slide because there's already a few slides here that will be a lot more exciting than what would be a four foot slide. And this just shows you a general layout. You know, they took our drawing and then just put this in their, their program. So it gives you a sense for what, you know, if there's seating and boulders around just in the plaza, what it will look like generally. Here's another angle just showing some of the elements. 
this is looking from the north to the south. So here's the east-west walkway in the background. We've decided to eliminate these music structures or elements just because of some concern for noise. And so we've asked for other types of mechanical or movable uh, items that can go here. What's the reason why I have some of these elements on the perimeter is we can have overlap of safety zones. So if the fall zone for the slide is out here, if you have things that don't require too much of a fall zone, you can overlap the play areas. And so we're asking for something here as well. But, you know, I don't know if they have like a giant hourglass that could be tipped over and see the sand go down or we've had, you know, a clock where they could turn the hands, something that could be added there. Um, and this is just a view looking from the walkway. So you know, this is actually a pretty big structure for the older kids. There's some climbing here with slides, and then there's a, a pretty high net, actually. It's a cable thing that kids can climb over to get to this taller structure that has slides, something else that climbs. Um, here's the spinner, and here's the two to five year age group that has you know, a, a roof shelter, which could be a different type of roof material. Um, you know, a rock climber and some steps up and platforms and bars. We've asked about um, different roof material, if they had like a perforated metal, which I think they have that could mimic what's on the spinner. So some designs have taller uh, posts here with a perforated uh, roof just for some shade. This will be slightly shaded from the existing trees, but I think, you know, for um, uh, during the central time of the day, it will be in direct sun. Um, it's hard to get shade in the playground if, unless you're adding it or you wait for uh, trees to mature. And I think that's it right now. Uh, Lindsay, do you have a question or comment? Oh, you have to unmute yourself. Um, hi, this looks great. I just had one um, primary concern is that, and that is the way it's shown currently. It looks like the sidewalks kind of come off of this big play area instead of having, um, like I wonder if you could just have a perimeter sidewalk that allows for people to go along the pathway without having to be inside of that play zone. Right, so we can, okay, yeah, that's a good question. So we've gone back and forth about this. Um, the idea is we could do a different rubberized surface material that would have an edging that would just continue along the perimeter to denote a walkway. So the reason why we've done this is our playground area, this play area is actually pretty small. And so to get some of the equipment we need, we actually need the, the rubberized surface to go to these edges uh, for the fall safe zone. So, you know, in one of the plans, for instance, if you just imagined, you know, a five foot offset here to wrap around this whole thing, we could do that and have that be a colored, a different material, different rubber color. Um, so then they know that it's the walkway. But we're, what we're trying to do is there's an existing tree here, here, and here, and we're really trying to minimize, you know, pushing out pavement to have another, you know, another sidewalk. So I don't know if just having a different color rubberized surface, you know, they pour it so that it would become a continuous surface, you know, they would, it would just be a, they pour one and the other. Yeah, I mean, I think just something that gives people a sense that there's a, a space for them to walk, uh, whether it's somebody in a wheelchair with a stroller, people that might be a little concerned about kids running around sure. and um, having <laughs> collisions. Sure. Um, also, just kind of, it, it gives, I think, an indication that there's this path that's continuous and loops around and it, it might pull people toward that path beyond. Right, that's a good point. Um, I also wonder. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Yep. Go, continue. Con no, continue. <laughs> um, I also wonder if I like the stump idea, and I wonder if that line that you're showing—it's uh, um, not really a line, but the the stump um, that kind of it's down below mm -hmm. that connects the keystone to the play area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm wondering. Um, like, I like the idea that maybe there's this kind of secondary loop mm -hmm. that allows people to move from the play area to the keystone, um, framing that, that area between those two trees. So um, I'm wondering kind of other than this, the stumps, is there, is this just grass or is there kind of like another, almost like a secondary path that people could take? 
Yeah, no, the uh, not, you know, it was, you know, as an accessible path, it would be this. Right. The idea would be that there's, you know, if someone can, you know, the idea is that someone could, this is at grade, so this would be wood fiber. Someone can, you know, could walk in this wood, this is all wood fiber area. Maybe mm -hmm. we bring the stumps out here and create more of an entry and then they, you know, this could be an all a wood fiber area. Yeah, I connection. think that would be nice. Mm -hmm. And then my last comment is that I, I, I question taking the sandbox out and putting in just another hard surface because I think you have that um, in a few locations with the patio and the amphitheater. Oh, so, um, you mean, so this right here is actually a loose P-stone area. So it's something that, you know, be, I don't know whether, whether if it, I don't know if it's six inches or whatever it is, a P-stone could be eight, but it'll just actually be loose P-stone that kids can play with. It won't be a, a, a macadam or anything. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, what's preferred sand or P-stone, but I like the idea that there's something soft there that can be mm -hmm. played with. Yeah, the sandbox, we had a lot of comments about the sanitation of it and the maintenance of it. You know, would it be covered? How is it disinfected? Mm. Um, yeah. But we, you know, we, I think we like the idea of P-stone, just, um, you know, it is small and it's tactile and it's loose, kids can still play with it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael? Uh, thanks. Uh, one, uh, one question and one comment. Uh, the question is about the um, wood fiber uh, bases. Uh, is that different from wood chips? And if so, how? The, um, it is, you know, they're supposed to, wood fiber is supposed to be, um, meet a certain specification in terms of size and compaction. And so that, you know, like wood chips, you can just have, you know, like Wagner wood chip up a tree and they can be, you can have some pretty big wood pieces of wood in there and rough bark. And wood fiber is supposed to be a finer material. Um, you know, it, it has to be raked out so, you know, it can move. And so over time you have to replenish it and, you know, there may be some weekly raking to keep it uh, in place. But the difference really is the, the texture and the, you know, the fineness of the material. Okay, thank you for the information. Um, a, a comment about the sign at the entryway. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, CPAC, Community, Community Preservation Act Committee, uh, has been uh, concerned with the fact that many of the things that it supports do not get any recognition. And it would be important to CPAC if the fact that this park was in part uh, provided by Community Preservation Act funds were stated on some signs at some point somewhere. So I would hope that that could be put on this, this welcome entry sign. Oh no, that, yeah, no, great. That would be on there. And then the park grant that's funding this also requires, you know, um, some language that says that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts park grant program has helped fund this uh, playground. And then they, their logo is like a four inch round circle with some stuff on, I guess I could, I could pull it up, but they, they don't, so they don't need a big, um, they don't need big language, but yeah, we've we've talked about having the CPA. It doesn't need big language either, and it doesn't have a logo. So just a just a line saying yeah. and funding from Community Preservation Act Committee. Oh no, thanks. That's a, yeah, that's a great idea to recognize that. Thank you, uh, Erica. This is great. Thank you for walking us through it. Um, I'm wondering if you could provide a little clarification for me on two points. And one is, um, what's the ground surface between? the amphitheater area and the mound area. It's shown in white on your drawing. And I think I see some of the, the tree stumps continuing. Mm -hmm. and um, so the idea would be this could be a planting area. It's okay. You know, we, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't color it in, but this is the pollinator garden and it could just be mimicked here too in terms of perennials or things that can be, you know, planted or, um, you know, be a, a, a seasonal plantings. Mm -hmm. Um, so a, a, just an a observation, kind of a, a kid behavior observation is that um, on the one hand, these kind of discrete pockets of space can be really nice for kind of containment, but the inclination probably will be to run through them. Um, and so perhaps like providing a, a, a connected uh, grassy zone might be worth considering. Okay. Um, and then the, my other question was, you mentioned some picnic tables um, that are perhaps, I'm not sure because we didn't see them, different than the tables um, in the, that granite circle um, to the west. 
where would the picnic tables be and are they part of the same family of uh, furniture or is it something different? Uh, yeah, so you had to ask that question and um, no, <laughs> the, um, yeah, I can, um, I'm going to pull up, I can do a new share. Where am I now? The, um, yeah, we haven't, you know, I th we haven't, you know, I think the thought would be the picnic table would be somewhere in this location. And I think we haven't determined that yet. The idea is that they would, um, you know, if there is a preferred location, but the idea would be that they would just be staked into the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, they could be moved. I, I don't want to say that they're seasonal. They're going to, you know, there'll be a one piece. Um, so I just ran down your grass zone idea first. I, I like that. The, um, you know, for this pollinator garden, there is a, a six inch curb right along here, at least on one edge. And I guess we could, you know, we're you know, at least trying to discourage kids from running from here straight around into this. But, you know, at least if there's a little bit of a curb, but I, 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 I get yeah. it. They're going to, um, they're going to have some fun with this. And let's look at, so for the table, we we're looking at, it's do more is the, the company that the vendor works with. And if people can see the, um, we can see it. Yeah. So the idea would be that they, they make this with a flat seat. And so it would be an eight foot table, uh, all metal with a flat seat. So to mimic the, um, mimic the top. And you know it's all one piece, which was preferred just for um, kind of safety and security. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, if you, this is what it would look like, that'd be the same thing. It'd be in the same colors we looked at the Sudan or the green, or the um, Carlsbad. You know, but if you have any recommendations on placement, we haven't. You know, I don't think we've decided on that yet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So, you know, I can go back. So, you know, it's interesting. So that this one vendor, if we're on Do More, they, if we look at the tables, they, they have a lot of options, but a lot of them are um, plastic or they're separate pieces. And so for picnic tables, you know, you, we were joking around, but just going with like the traditional kind of picnic table. But these are the options, if everyone can see, that they offer. Mm -hmm. um, well, could things. they just be put out in the ground? I mean, and not necessarily within the confines of, or maybe that's what you're thinking, not necessarily within the confines of the playground, but just there someplace else in Kendrick Park or close to the, perhaps the, perhaps the edges of the playground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Somewhere yeah. in this area. Yeah, there were some comments at the planning board that, you know, although this is provide some seating, it's not a lot. And so we're thinking that having some, you know, at least, you know, Public Works had said that, you know, we could do two picnic tables, maybe one goes here, maybe right. here. And, you could see the use and demand, and it could also be something that in the future, if we gauge that there's more interest, we could add them. Right. Yeah. I love the idea of all the plantings, but I'm just so, I have this tentative I feeling that uh, Amherst doesn't, I don't think we have a good track record of maintaining what limited plantings we have. And if it weren't for the bid and the garden club, uh, we probably wouldn't have anything. And my worst fear is that all these shrubs and flowers will be put in and then they will just get shabby and run over and broken and look worse than having nothing. And I don't know whether there's some kind of a commitment from public works that they're really going to come in every week and see if things are watered and pruned and because uh, kids are going to be playing and they're going to be running through things. They're going to bring, they probably have a dog or two. And before you know it, it won't be what you might have visualized. And I don't know what your thinking is on that. That's just a thought yeah. I have. Now the, um, yeah, I mean, we're looking at, you know, somewhat uh, hardy plants in terms of, uh, you know, the need for watering or maintenance. But I, I do agree that they can get beat up with the use on uh, kids. Someone has suggested kind of like a shorny, uh, 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 sharp uh, shrub, like a hawthorn with, uh -huh. you know, with prickers and things, but that's not something we're- <laughs> They'll only go in there once. <laughs> we're gonna go, go there, you know, that would really deter kids. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think, you know, the idea would be hopefully they, you know, once they're established, um, they'll need um, less maintenance. But I, you do bring up a good point. The planning board asked, what's the maintenance cost yeah. of this? And we haven't- you know, I mean, with the budget that. looking like it is, I, it's hard for me to imagine somebody from Public Works is going to be up there paying 
too much attention to that or any attention at all. Uh, and maybe somebody will adopt it as a project. Yeah. yeah, or I think, you know, like the planning board asked, what is the cost of this? And we don't have that exactly, but I do think that as Amherst improves its parks, it, you know, there is going to need to be more uh, money put into capital yeah, and operating right. for this. So be this year. Yeah, I mean, even, you know, Groff Park, we've said that, you know, we're putting in a really big addition at Groff Park and we've done some work at Mill River that all that needs maintenance. And so it's something that the community, you know, I think is realizing, but, you know, we, I, I like to think that probably in the 70s and 80s, Amherst had really great all new parks, and then we haven't done much since then. And so as we start to revitalize them, it will take a little bit of extra maintenance, you know, for the foreseeable future. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I'm hopeful that it'll be maintained. And we're, like I said, Public Works and Alan Snow, the tree warden, is coming up with a plant list for kind of hardy and durable plants. Um, it looks like uh, Christine has, Chris has a question or comment. Chris? Well, I just wanted to say just what Nate said. Um, we have had two members of the um, DPW staff, um, Paul Dethier, who's actually listening right now, and also Alan Snow, the tree warden. So Paul is a landscape architect and Alan is um, a registered tree warden. And they have been uh, working on this design with us. So I'm hoping that they will, um, you know, bring the care that they have brought to the design to whatever maintenance is necessary. And Alan is really the person who is um, in charge of maintaining parks. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. he's got a, as they say, he's got skin in the game. So maybe he'll <laughs> really work hard to maintain this park. Can I just say for one second here, mm -hmm. Maureen? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure, yep. Sorry, um, I, I think it's great and I vote yes as it stands. I think you're coming along. Unfortunately, I only, planned on this for an hour. I'm, I'm in Connecticut. I'm supposed to be taking care of my grandson. So I need to leave the meeting now. Okay. Um, Just bring your grandson into the meeting. Well, I thought about it, but I don't know. <laughs> He's only 15 months. Um, well, uh, Jane, uh, if you have any um, comments that you come to mind that you wish you had said, Feel mm -hmm. free to e email me and I can forward that on to Nate and Chris. Okay, I think I think it's coming along really well. I like all the changes you've made since last time we saw it and um, it's great. It's gonna be wonderful. So, okay. thanks. thanks. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, are you thinking this is a park that's going to attract people from all over town or do you, anticipate that it might be a park that's going to attract more local people who might walk to it as opposed to trying to drive and find a place to park, with parking being somewhat limited there. But yeah, there's some permit parking on North Pleasant Street. Right. And then you know, there's the Prey Street lot. And so, you know, I, I mean, I'd like to say it'd be both. I think it, you know, it's a great neighborhood and um, local park, and it can also be used by visitors and people yeah. who the town. You know, it's not the biggest playground. My thought would be, um, you know, I, you know, I, 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 as someone who come into town, I'd probably use it, you know, just as much. You know, I, you know, I, if I was a family, I'd make a trip here, and then maybe I would check out Community Field another time or Groff Park. So, I think we'll draw different types uh -huh. of users. Sure. Um, you know, the parking's been asked, and so we're, you know, there is consideration in the future for what's happening on North Pleasant Street. So the, the design is pulled away a little bit from the curb line here. So if there ever needs to be a little bit widening of the road, right. that can be accommodated if, you know, if, say for instance, if another set, you know, if both sides of the road are made to be parallel parking. Right. Yeah. Um, it's not part of it now, but you know, we're kind of anticipating some possible right. changes. Yeah, I would just add that I think this could be a nice attraction for young families either that live in Amherst or in the Valley that, you know, come here and then maybe they get lunch or dinner or they just walk around town, but it's just another, another activity for the family to enjoy. Yeah. If, and yeah, imagine yeah. if there's outdoor dining yeah. and this, yeah. it could be quite nice. Yeah. Somebody, uh, at, I, when you gave this present, I know you've given this presentation so many times, but there was, I thought, a, uh, a good suggestion for somebody who, who had seen signage from San Francisco that had a sign up. Uh, you have to be accompanied by a child in order to come into the park, which means, you know, there, we know there are a lot of people uh, 
who really are looking for a place to hang out all day because there's no place to go? And are you considering that aspect of this whole thing, the, the picnic benches and the tables being used by people who aren't bringing in children? Yeah, we, we talked about that point. I thought it was an interesting one, but I think the design team felt that you know, that's somewhat of an exclusionary policy. So, you know, as a downtown park, there may be people who just want to walk around here or use it as, you know, an accessible loop and not necessarily bring children. So, you know, I guess some of it would be, um, you know, we can reassess how it's used yeah. after it's constructed. So if we find that it's not, you know, there's unintended consequences because of a lack of rules or regulations we could reconsider, but for now we're not going to have that type of policy. You know, no, no park in Amherst has that, you know, we don't, we don't have, um, yeah. Whereas this is down, I know, but this is downtown mm -hmm. and, and this, you know, this is a little different uh, than Groff Park. Well, that's up to you. It's obviously your decision. So, right. I mean, my thought would be though, you know, to me, this is the, the, if this whole thing is the playground, I would hate to say that someone, you know, say a couple without kids wants to walk through here and maybe sit on this bench for a minute and have a snack. I mean, that yeah, just seems yeah. like, right. Yeah. Not. Yep. You know, yep. If, if, you know, there is, we, do, we can, you know, if people are loitering, that's one thing. If they're, they are just uh, enjoying it, that's. Yeah, you know. right. Okay. Is there any other, any other comments or uh, are you looking for a motion or you're just, what you just sort of want to get us up to date? What's. Uh, yeah, no, what yeah, no, um, thanks for asking. Yeah, the, we're going back to the planning board on May 20th. And so. You know, if, if the design review board, ha you know, if you feel like you'd like to make a motion, that'd be great. Or, you know, I, I've written down your comments and it'll bring those to the planning board. Um, <clears throat> the, do, uh, do Chris people have, have a but, motion or, uh, or just? Uh, Chris, chance. do you want to answer? Do you have something to add? I just wanted to say that this may be the last time we're going to the planning right. board. Um, we yeah. are under some time constraints. We thought initially that our deadline was June first to get these drawings to the state. The state is giving us probably till the end of June to get the drawings to the state, but I don't think we're going to be going back to the planning board again unless the planning board wants us to come back there. So this, I guess what I'm saying is this may be your um, last opportunity to Wait. vote in favor or make a recommendation or, or whatever, because the planning board might vote to accept this on Wednesday. On the other hand, they might not, but I'm just putting that out there. So would you want to, I'm sorry, somebody. Oh, so, I was just going to say, I mean, I, we've been, uh, Nate, Chris, and myself, we've been jotting down all the recommendations yeah. and comments that you um, said tonight and then from the last meeting on April 22nd. Um, well, I'm happy just having a, if the group just, if the group just agrees uh, with a consensus that we approve it, uh, that we like what we see and that we would encourage them to move on. Uh, I don't know that you need a, but Erica and Lindsay, do you want, and Michael, do you want to make a motion or shall we just give a general consensus that we are okay? I'm happy to make the motion that we um, okay, approve the design and uh, with recommendations. Okay, good. All right, a second. I second that. Okay. Um, any other comments for the discussion? If not, all in favor? Uh, uh, wait, I think we yes. need to suggest what Erica's recommendations are. Um, so, oh. I was referring to the ones that we had made collectively. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Thought Reed has been yeah. noting. I thought yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have been noting. Uh, we could go through that, uh, through those. Um, yeah, I mean, I have the previous meeting on April 22nd in front of me, and then I also have one from yeah. tonight. So. Right. Yeah. I think um, we just go with... Uh, well, do you want to go through them, or, or do you want um, to base it on our notes? How about you, Erica? Do you, are you okay with just the notes? I'm fine with the notes. Okay. Michael, do you need to hear the recommendations, oh, or perfect. are you... It's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. All right. You're I don't think there were too many, but... Uh, no. Okay, all in favor then, let's vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, opposed, none. All right, that's good. Great, yay. Thank you very much.
Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Nate and Chris, for yes. attending and um, for talking about the, the the memo that was sent by yourself and Paul, and for explaining the updates for Kendrick Park. Uh -huh. Yeah, I have a general question before we can adjour adjourn. Um, I'm not. Uh, I've only used the OneDrive only a few times, and every time I send a link to people, I always wonder. Ooh, I hope they can open it. Um, are people able to open the the link that uh, that I've mm -hmm. been sending? Yeah. Not the, I didn't get to I didn't get to open the latest one, and I'll have to work on that. But the other ones, I mean, obviously. So. But I'll they have okay. And do you need a password or anything? Is it just uh, you just no. click on it and it brings you right there? Okay, that that's great. Uh, I just wasn't exactly sure. Yeah. I, I sent you an email saying I do, I couldn't open it, but I didn't. Uh, hmm. I didn't try that hard because I'd seen so many of these other ones. So, okay, I'll keep working on it. Soon. Sometimes you have to download the material before you can really read it. That's Got one it. thing I've discovered. If you yeah. just open it, sometimes it has strange lines on it and you can't really see it very well. But if you download it and then look at it, it's easier to see it. Okay. That's good to know. All right. Yeah. I've only used it just a couple times. Um, so I'm always hoping for the best. <laughs> All right. Well, in the future, if, if anyone's obviously not able to open um, one of those links, okay. um, obviously email okay. me and let me know. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Well, uh, thank you. Thanks again for for meeting. Um, okay. Does anyone have any other comments or questions well, before we adjourn? I just had one comment. I see, you know, that uh, sort of convenience store in Triangle Street closed and I saw a sign that is at the Amherst Market that's coming in there. And if that's so, do that do they have to come before the design review board like the convenience store did or yeah if that's if it's okay. within the drb if they're proposing uh signage and yeah okay i so, anything your, exterior all right i just saw the sign and um on the window the other day so oh uh, yeah so I'm well, just it's a, that. i would just add that it depends on what um comes out of this discussion about true temporary zoning because that could be one of the businesses that's covered by this temporary zoning um amendment okay all right well good luck with that all right <laughs> anything else <laughs> okay are we marine do we have anything else no I, i'm okay. good all right so Can we have a motion to adjourn yes. somebody move so motion don't move Okay. Second. Yes. All in favor to yep. adjourn. Okay. Everybody say aye. Wave aye. your hands. Okay. Aye. All right. Great. You don't have an, an, anything else coming up then, do you, Maureen? Not at the moment. No. Okay. All right. Yeah. We're, but I will, but I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Take Thank care, everyone. Be well, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.